very much. Thank you for inviting me. Um, again, my name is Stefan Peter-Meiner. I'm actually German, but I'm director of WE Film in London, which also, like you, Stephanie, tried to combine this, the Italian school with the English school and, uh, in the field of violin making. And uh, just a short um, CV of myself, I started violin making long time ago, more than 40 years, I know I'm much younger, but I have a long year experience and I started really very young and I'm still very passionate about that, violin making. And, and I was in the past quite political about supporting modern instruments and was very, saw this more as a competition between old and new instruments. And after I moved to uh, London, I learned that there is also a together and not uh, one against the, the other. So there is only possible to combine or to, to have modern and old instruments being played together on stage. It's not about this one is better or this one is better. <clears throat> and um, because in London, as you probably know, is a center of old violin dealing. And there are a lot of modern makers there as well. And I would like to show just how this being together and going together with old and new instruments um, worked in the past as well. And uh, with our company, WEU, is actually a very good example where this was parallel for more than two centuries of modern making of the old instruments. And, um, I don't know how much you know about the history of violin making. Let's start with the very beginning that was in Amati's time in Cremona, in Italy, about 1550, where there were only modern instruments existing because it was kind of the events of instruments. So um, <clears throat> there was um, the, the kind of first time of the violin, which is called Baroque time, it was actually coming from the Renaissance. And um, 200 years later, it was, or 150 years later, it was a golden period of instrument making in Italy. It was a time of Stradivari and Guarneri, this place that we all know. And in his time, in Stradivari's time, the modern instrument, uh, well, let's say there were already a lot of old instruments around, um, but there was not this hype about old and new instrument that was also a Parallel thing where they had the old instrument, they had modern instrument, and um, these instruments created in this time in Italy around 1700 are still for us today um, the, the, the most desirable instruments. They are amazing in sound, and when you look at them, and they still give us the models of instruments we built as modern instruments. And um, again, and let's say 150 years later, it was the time of people like Robert Christian in Paris, who was actually the first one who combined these two things. He was dealing with old instruments, he was a main dealer in his time in Paris and worldwide, and he bought a lot of instruments, old instruments from Stradivari, Amati, Guarneri, from Italy, and again, these instruments were in this time 150 years old, so they were old instruments, and he had a huge production of modern instruments as well, and both. And so he was the first one making this combination, and at the same time, making himself a competition with his own instrument, because people compared his new with the old instrument, and already in the time of the ohm, um, the Stradivari costs much more than the modern instrument made by the ohm. So the question is, if they be, were they better than his modern instrument? How did that work? <clears throat> and then again, let's say 50, 60 years later, it was a big time of the W.E. Hill and Sun Company, because they were worldwide then after the ohm the biggest dealer of old instruments. They wrote a lot of books about Stradivari, Guarneri, Magini, and 
they wrote for almost all the famous instruments that are still around of Stradivari Guarneri. They were the experts writing certificate for them. And parallel to that, they had a huge production of modern instruments. So they built um, more than, let's say, 600 instruments until now. So when we took over the Hill Company, um, which was some years ago in London, um, we continued with the production of the modern instruments. So we have a book where we say the new workbook and the, all the instruments have numbers. And um, so every instrument we make gets a new number. And um, so that's all in this kind of a tradition of the Hill instrument. And the question is, how can this be combined? And how does it work to have parallel modern and old instrument? And what is the advantage of the old instrument? What is the advantage of the modern instrument? And that's what I want to talk about, not about what is better, but what is a good thing on this, what is a good thing on the other instrument. And if you have any questions, please, if possible, I don't know if I can hear any of you. Um, Stephanie, I can hear you definitely, but, but if I can your questions from the people listening to me, I'm not sure about that, but yeah, perfect. Um, because I think there will be some questions at the end and probably can also have it uh, afterwards, but I'm happy to tr try to answer all the questions. So, um, modern instruments... Just repeat um, that in the time of the Om, all the famous musicians like Paganini, Isai, Joseph Joachim, all of them played on old famous Italian instruments. There was one big, big difference to nowadays. In this time, they were able to purchase them, to buy them. They were still affordable for them. And they chose this instrument, first of all, because they sounded amazing. Second of all, because of the image that was then already there, that all these famous musicians had this idea, I have to play on a famous old Italian instrument. And the high expectations from side of the uh, audience that they want to hear these instruments and that they want to listen uh, and want to read this name of the makers in the program. <clears throat> so everybody knew that Guarneri was playing on this famous Paganini, uh, no, that Paganini was playing on this famous instrument of Guarneri. And um, because of that, most of the musicians played actually on this old Italian instrument. And there was, I don't know if there was comparison between, between old and new instrument was going on in this time. Um, but if so, I think the modern instruments were also good, but probably not quite on the level of the old instrument. With Hill, it was the same, let's say, problem that they produced the modern instrument more for the, let's say, cheap market. And the modern instrument were sold 500 of them, while with the um, with the old instrument, that it was not this amount of old famous instruments available to sell, and they were already quite expensive, and they were kind of going from one famous player to the next famous player. It was just I, I always compare it to things like like handbags, that when you have a Louis Vuitton handbag, this might be very expensive, 
And it's an image question why you have, when you go to the opera or to the concert or to ball, why you have these expensive handbags because people see, oh, it's a Louis Vuitton. It's not because of the function that these handbags are better than other handbags. It's just that you think, oh, I have to have this handbag to accept it in my society. And the society of musicians expect actually for famous musicians to play on this famous old Italian instrument. And quite recently, that is, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, it was the first possibility to compare old and modern instrument in a scientific way. And what they found out is that actually there is no significant sound difference between modern and good old instrument. It all depends on the quality of the instrument, that you have good and bad old instruments, and you have good and bad modern instruments. But when you compare the good, really top modern instruments with the really top old instruments, you couldn't measure a difference. And when you do a blind test behind the curtain, you also couldn't find out which one is which. The main difference still remains that the old instruments cost 100 times or even more, more than the modern instruments. And this gap between the modern instrument and the old instrument is now so high that a musician is not able nowadays to buy a good old instrument anymore. But just to give you an example, a normal, good, decent, not famous, but okay, Stradivari, you won't get under five million dollar. And the good one, they go in the meantime in the area of 20,000 20 million, sorry, 20 million dollar or even higher, which is out of the range of a musician nowadays. And so it has to be bought by um, either, pri either private investors who buy it with the idea of oh, 10 years I will sell them again when the price went up again, or um, collectors, sponsors, foundations. So you are always in a situation of dependency. So you cannot just say, oh, I have now my fiddle and I can play it for the rest of my life. You always are in the fear of somebody calling you saying, sorry, next month we need the violin back because the owner died and we have to sell it. Or things like this happen quite often. While with a modern instrument, when you are able to purchase it, it's yours and nobody can take it away from you. So this is definitely one advantage of the modern instrument that it is yours. You can do with it whatever you like. Also the problem with the old instrument, you have an obligation to show it to a violin maker every year to check it up. And you are not allowed to, uh, to go to the person you trust. You have to go to a person that is kind of you're obliged to go to. Other thing with old instrument, what I hear quite often, that for example with the Nippon Foundation, one of the most famous foundations with old instruments in Japan, um, you are not allowed officially to play music from the 20th century. Because they say that is not good for the instrument. So you have these ideas that restrict you to, to play on this instrument. On the other hand, to play on such a famous instrument, it comes with a huge emotional uh, thing that is quite amazing when you, for example, have the instrument. I've been to, um, it was not yesterday, but the day before, I've been to the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra playing with Augustin Hedelich on the Le Duc Guarnier de Gese that was played by Henrik Schering before. I heard this instrument by Henrik Schering played some decades ago, and I remember it quite well. And now to hear it with it was Prokofiev's second, uh, second violin concert, to hear it again with a different person, or to remember the sound quite, comes with a quite strong emotional um, component that modern instrument will never have. So the history of this old instrument is quite amazing, you know? And um, so it's an emotional, positive thing that comes with the old instrument. 
one of the emotional positive things that it's your own instrument that you can actually really connect to it because you know you played for at least 10 years or longer or your whole life you have the possibility to say i love the instrument it's mine nobody can take it away from me which you can connect to it much more you identify with the instrument this i would say is a more emotional positive thing on the modern instrument but the main thing is that the let's say normal musician nowadays is anyway not able to have one of these 200 most famous Stradivari or Guarneri instruments because they are given to other people that stay in, in let's say, the first row if, uh, as concertmaster somewhere or as soloist. So there is not this the, the possibility to give it to 100,000 good players. It's only the best ones get that. And um, so it is, in my opinion, would be quite good just to open our horizon to see from the quality of the instrument, we do not need to have a Stradivari or Guarneri. We do not even have to have to have an old instrument. We can do it with a good modern instrument because what the people hear out there in a concert, they will not hear any difference because the difference very often is not existing. On the other hand, we have to say that it is not easy to find a really good sounding modern instrument. You know, it, um, I think that still, let's say, more than half, if not 70-80% of the instruments made nowadays, that they are not really good sounding. They have their problems and it comes also with a big problem uh, that you buy an instrument and you do not know how the instrument will develop. You know, it probably might sound good at the beginning, but after 10 years it collapses sound-wise. That is a risk that we as modern makers have to deal with. We have to somehow compensate a player if he's not happy anymore. Um, so that these are all things that modern makers should be very um, considerate and should be very generous in dealing with the, with the musicians to, to make a musician really happy. But I, I think to, to have this as a very strong alternative to think when you're looking for your own instrument, to think, okay, I should go into the modern instrument area, it opens a huge field of makers everywhere where you are and to compare the instrument and, and that's another thing I mean um, when you are a famous musician and you are looking for one Stradivari a donor or a, a foundation gives you one Stradivari to play on you do not have a choice you play this one or you don't play this one with modern instruments you can just look around everywhere and compare instruments and be free in your decision and you have so much more possibilities with modern instruments and um, so that is my recommendation to to um, to young players you not know, to think oh because the soloist play a strat i also to be good need to play the strat and the reason why they play the strat is quite often not the quality it's more this image that they need to listen and that is, um, yeah, coming back to Hill. Um, nowadays, the, the thing um, with modern and old instruments to have in one house is a very good possibility to create all the good modern instrument because you can compare them to these famous old instruments. And, um, it is quite important also for you guys when you are looking for an instrument that you try to find possibilities to compare with other instruments. For example, the instrument of your teacher and, and all of that. And when you make a decision for an instrument, whatever it is, with an old or new instrument, that you try to make this decision um, 
that you take your time and that you don't do it under the influence of people who have their own interests. So that means when you um, compare an instrument with another instrument, you don't do it when there is a dealer involved or the maker or whoever. Try to get the instrument out of the situation where people have their own interest and make up your own mind without somebody pushing you somewhere. It's a big decision which instrument to play. It's a big. Um, it, it's still also with a modern instrument. It's a lot of money that you have to to spend for that, and therefore um, you need first of all time. Then you need the freedom of your own choice, and you need a good help of somebody. Um, try to to choose which instrument is the best for you. Therefore, I recommend just to do it together with a friend, with a teacher, with whoever it is, but somebody that can play the violin, that you have a different opinion or the form of a player, that you do not even, uh, you as a listener, that you have a player and he plays for you and you can listen how the instrument sounds from far away. And um, the best message is always when you have several instruments to compare and you do just a blind test, you don't know which one is which, you play and compare the instruments and um, choose then which one you prefer. Most of the makers, when you go there and ask for an instrument, they do not only have one, they probably have two or three to compare with. And that's very important that you do this um, comparison, that you compare the instruments with you as players, how you feel, and also with your listeners, how they sound if somebody else plays them. And um, yeah, that's my just my recommendation. Be open. There is, let's say, the first twenty, last 20, 30 years, so many great young makers around that would be really happy to cooperate with you and to to um, to find the right instrument for you and to offer their work to you. And um, that I think is, is a good good starting point for you to, to find a good instrument and if that what is planned with with um, the um, hill company that you somehow build up instrument that can be lent to your students, Stephanie, that is anyway good that you do not have this pressure or have to find an instrument now in four weeks, whatever that you have, let's say a year time while you play, play the, the hill instrument to find something that might be better for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are it's good that you there, Stephanie, as a as a pianist. Um, as you might know, um, the piano nowadays is the strongest enemy of the violin. Not so the pianist, but the piano itself is so strong that if you have the chance to try out an instrument and to see if that instrument really works, do it together with the piano, because you might find it quite loud and full and nice sounding until you have a piano 
beside, and then the piano totally covers the violin. So there, there is something that you you um, have to see. A violin sound is not only something that is nice and beautiful and that you like. It's also something that has a function to carry in the hall. And it, every violin is loud enough in a big concert hall as long as there is nobody else playing. You know, it's only about that there are sometimes louder instruments that cover the sound. So you can play a very soft sounding Baroque violin in the Berlin Philharmonic, uh, in the, in the Berlin for Phil Hall, and you will hear everything everywhere because there is nobody else. I mean, if somebody takes out a candy and opens it, it probably will cover that sound of the, or coughing somewhere. But so it's very, Helpful. Try out together um, with the piano, and the other thing is to try out instruments with a long piece, very short. Let's say the begin of the string sonata of Beethoven, you know, or what is also good, what you can also do with the piano accompany is Tchaikovsky violin concert, the beginning stuff like that that goes over all four strings and only the beginning, let's say the first eight bars, and then change the instrument to the same piece again. You cannot compare the one violin played with the Mozart with the second one played with the Prokofiev. Mm -hmm. That is not possible. So play, do it like in an academic way, not in a beautiful way of, of um, making music. Try to, to make it more, more, let's say, rational and not not going for the beauty, which is still the most important thing. You should feel comfortable with the instrument and it should sound beautiful. But nowadays one really important component is if it carries and it can and if you can hear it even um, if there's a strong other instrument that might be covering it. And um, the the problem quite often is that you are used to one instrument and you compare everything with this one instrument that you have. So to really be, be fair and to play an instrument, let's say, in the best way it should be played, um, it needs some days and weeks to do that. So when you take an instrument that is very far away from the instrument that you love, then this instrument has no chance be better, even if it is better. I remember the first time I played the Strat, I was so disappointed and I heard it. It was actually played by some quite famous um, musician in, in a concert. And I know that this instrument sounded great because I heard it him playing as a soloist in a big romantic concert. And me playing the instrument, I was very disappointed. I thought, oh, what is that? Oh, it sounds horrible. You know? So because my own instrument that I was playing this time was just so far away from this one. You have to get used to a sound. That is why I say it has to be played by somebody that is a good player in the hall that you can hear how is that sound. And that is important that it's not only what you like, also what you, as a player, it's also what you like to listen to. And so it's, it's quite a process to find a good instrument for you and you should just take your time to do that and you should be relaxed and not under pressure because it should not be like with some musicians that is kind of a window open now by an instrument and then you have it in the closed window. It should be, we as artists, we should always be open to things and should search for something better and better. That is our nature and we should do it with everybody, with our, let's say, the way we play, the music we play with our teacher, and also, sorry to say that the teacher, but we also should, should always try to find better things and also with the instruments. So we should be very critical with that and not take the first thing we, we, we can cause and think that's, that's good enough for me. There is probably something that is even better. And from my own experience, I love my own instruments very much as long as I do not find something better, which happens quite often. So in, in the moment when I find the instrument that is better sounding than the other one, then this one that I loved before is probably not good anymore. 
we should find out okay um, what is better what is better and we should just try to find as many as possible instruments that we can compare and build up our opinion that we are able to choose choose the instruments and and there there is a, a kind of um, a good message how we can choose instrument there there are many people recommended more or less the same method how they do with blind tests you can also let's say just a little instruction how to do that um, when you have let's say eight instruments let's say you have the luxury to have eight different instruments to choose from you cannot play one two three four five six seven eight because then you cannot compare number eight with number one. You should just compare two instruments and take the better one in the next round. Do you understand? So never, because you can only compare an instrument when it has been played the other one right before. You cannot compare an instrument when you played five instruments in between. So you just have to build little, let's say, let's say you have three instruments to compare with. You compare one and two, then you compare between one and two the best one with three, and the winner of this is the best instrument. And the moment you compare one, and then you play two, and then you play three, you already forgot instrument number one, how it sounded. So, and when you do that and you have the winner of this, then you let your friend play the same thing with different order and you are the one choosing which one you prefer. And when you have the same result, then it's quite clear which one is the better and which one is the best. Yeah. Yeah, and um, how old was the child that was playing on it? You know, so already playing the full size Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Because if it's a children instrument, a smaller mm -hmm. one, it's clear that will never sound as the other. And um, I do not know, because as a violinist, there is something that you should know that you put your weight down but not too much and I don't think if that is connected with the body size because there are violinists for example Kyung Ba Chung she is smaller than my daughter who is 11 but she has a much bigger sound sadly and other violinists let's say Midori is quite short and very small person and they produce a immense sound so I'm not sure if well, if, you know that the problem is you cannot really separate the instrument and the player. That is why you probably be right when with the player, the player plays the play the place for you to try out the instrument, plays the way you would play the instrument. Probably for him it works, but not for you. That can be um, because the way of playing an instrument is a very different one, and every instrument has to be played differently. 
it makes it a bit difficult the whole thing for example in general i think old instruments in general they have to be played in a different way than a modern instrument um, so it is it is quite difficult to say anything here uh, with, with that the instrument is here and the maker can or the change the instrument with it and the player is here they somehow have to meet here so you have to adjust to every instrument. You have to change your playing according to the quality of the instrument. So for example, if an instrument is quite difficult to play, you have to put a bit more weight here on that arm that, you, that it works better. On an old instrument in general, you would play with a bit more bow speed, like Guido Kramer does. And the modern instrument is more that you go a bit closer to the bridge and the slower bow to bring it best out. Um, the problem is when you try out an instrument, you are not able, when you're not experienced, to change your way of playing immediately. What you should do to bring the best out of this instrument. And that is why. All these tests, all the tests that I recommend to try out one and two is a bit tricky because this person who tries out the instrument and compares the instrument had no time to adjust to the instrument, to find out this instrument is the best. So for example, they did in London with the concert master and the LSO, they did a test some years ago with I think four modern instrument and a Stradivari. And you compare this instrument and your strat, the strat very was clearly the best. But the reason is because it was his own strat very that he was playing since the last 30 years. So you cannot give somebody that is used to an instrument a new one and say, well, now you play this and compare because you play it in the way you used to play your own instrument. That is why I think it makes sense just to take your time or with all the instruments to find out, okay, where are the, the limits of this instrument. And, and I, I know some people who can immediately adjust to every instrument. It is quite astonishing that, that some people are able to do that um, and find out immediately the, the best way to play this specific instrument. But most of the players, especially most of the players who do not have a lot of experience with different instruments are not able to do that. So, any more questions? Any questions with bows, for example, or prices of instruments, or insurance of instruments, or traveling with instruments? <laughs> <laughs> say to the violin maker what you do. So you have to start as soon as possible to make this kind of choice and talk to them. And we did and many share yeah. because to work with yourself as a musician and somewhere where your instrument makes a border. And then you go to the violin maker and say, listen please, I would like to have something or something here. So this is how it was done. It was times when Paganini was playing a period bow, and this bow has uh, a function just a very small part which was possible to use. Somewhere between, so, so like maybe just three, four, three, three quarter of the bow we know today. And someday he thought it's enough and went to tour and told him, please, can you please do something better? And he did, and thanks this, we have a bow we use now. So, 
uh, we have to go forward. We have to stop, admire the past, and understand that that was in the past because people like Paganini were working together with people like Stuart and produce this kind of instrument. And now it's just we are home. We are here together trying to go on and do something new. And making new sounds in the new halls. The halls are different now. We have completely different problems. We have the tone in our concert locations now, which was not the case 300 years ago, or a Steinway 190. And you have to go there and make a recital of the Swiss drums tonight. So, There is a piece of wood, four strings, a piece of wood, and that's it. Yeah. So, uh, and the tone everywhere. What do you want to do? Yeah. And, and the, the landscape with the makers the last 20, 30 years totally changed. And, and the, 30 years ago, you build as a maker an instrument, and you look at the varnish and the corners and the effort and the scroll, and you are so happy, and, and then you call your client and tell him, well, look, it's really great instrument, I'm so happy, come and have a look. And the musician comes, and the instrument is lying on the table, and then this really unexpected, horrible thing happens. The musician takes the instrument and plays on it. The worst thing that can happen in a violin making workshop 20 years ago, but somebody plays on that new made instrument, it is to look at and to the corner and the varnish. Nowadays, a violin maker is very much interested in the sound. It really, really changed. It really changed because the makers are young. When you go to violin making school nowadays, you have to play quite good the instrument by yourself. And for most of the makers, when you ask them, not the corner and the perfecting is uh, important, it's the sound is important. Yeah. And for them, it is great to have a cooperation with musicians who say, well, I like this, I want it like that, and I don't like that. So they, they wait for that. And you are the one that first, like Hannah said, has, have to define what you actually want for a sound. And it's very difficult to describe a sound with words. And I spoke with Alan here from the workshop today about that. What, how can that be described? And they have a quite good method with some diagram. And my method is actually to describe it with vocals. That you say, okay, which vocal, R, A, D, O, U, is the dominant vocal in my violin sound that I like? And it is for most of the famous Italian instruments is actually the E and E. So this open vocal, the overtone structure of this is very dominant. And that is also what carries in the hall that is the thing that makes a good instrument. But you have to hear it by yourself. So you have to find out if an instrument has more of an O sound going through the nose, or of it all the O, or if it's the E. And, and just only the, the way your mouth is when you describe the good violin sound, it should be something that comes close to smiling. It is always this E, you know? That is good violin sound and not this A ah or A, ah, you know? And, and to go with this idea that you either describe it or you, you just play on it and have the idea, okay, I like this and I do not like this, and to find out why do you like this and not the other, just to, to bring it a bit from your first impression to a second idea that you, what you're looking for, I think helps yourself and the maker where you have contact. Yes, so we have to have to consider the new problems. We have more and more problems in the world. So we need to work with it to get it solved. Because as I told you before, it's quite hard to, to, to work with it all. There's no hard yeah. So it's just a we have a new repertoire, we have to manage, we have more and more solo pieces, uh, and we have close to the pianos which are getting 
more modes there are more modes there we have a brass section by yamaha in the orchestra with flutes and, and, and brass instruments when you're spending their solos and they play together uh it's, it's yeah so they all are going forward like three with the flutes yeah and we we are with instruments for seven days ago yeah <laughs> it's bloody unfair and, and not everything that sounds loud to you on the ear really projects. And the mixture of the sound at the end of the day, you have this mixture from behind, from brass section, and they are just like a wave over the head. So you you are lost. In the worst case, you have some okay. Then come people with strings. Did you try to new strings? Yeah, I did. But the guy there, this is not about the strings. It's, it's so compromised over to you. I have no chance. I have somewhere in the middle of yeah. this whole making good faith to a bad game. So no, it's impossible. No, we can't play louder. No, 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 no. And you have to stop all. I remember I was it was like ten years ago, or maybe even uh, longer, in a recital, Marta Argerik Mishomaisky, the Vina Music Verein. I didn't hear, nobody heard Misha myself. Sure. No one. It was just pandemic. It was strange, but so we had no chance. But we saw him. We saw him. Which is nice with the curly hair on the, <laughs> the, the medallion. It's, it's nice. But it was just not to hear. Maybe yeah. somewhere very in front of oh. I mean, but this opens another field cello and viola. Is there any, I see a cello, no, that's a violin scroll. Is there any viola player can probably raise their hand? No viola. You are playing the viola. Oh, okay. So you have, for example, always the issue with the size of the viola. Sorry, I have a question to you. I was late for the conference, but I understood what you were talking about. And uh, I would like to ask you, are you a violin player or viola? Or both instruments. Uh, my wife is a viola player. I'm a violin player. Mm -hmm. But if you know, the violin player can also play the viola. The other way around, no, sure, you can. So I think that if, as a violin maker, you should be then able to play the violin and the viola. Mm -hmm. What I cannot do in the cello, which is problem because I try out by myself the instrument if I like them or not and if I have to adjust them I do this as a player so I'm, I'm quite good with hearing how it should feel here with me under the, the skin but uh, under the chin but um, it is more of a problem with the viola because of the size and um, it is limited we don't have this, Stephanie. We don't have this problem with the violin because one is played the size for everybody. But with the with the viola, you normally try to play the biggest instrument you can play. And that's wrong. That might be wrong. That, that is, is wrong. I had I, weeks ago, Stephanie. We did play two, and we played the instrument. Kind of too big, and I can't just have three lights. And it's too big, and it's too big, and I have to do the And I, there's another colleague, uh, he is famous, um, very famous violinist, and he was So, and I knew he was sharing this with us. And I wrote to him a message and asked him, please be honest, anything comfortable. He writes to me back, no, I wasn't comfortable. I thought such a thing that I never played your game. Okay? So. <laughs> and this is. Yeah. Um, and then he says to me, he writes yeah. me, I think it's just a matter that we are in our sides, not switch. switch I say, no, the yoga has to be restricted yeah. for our body to be. Yeah. Trying to think because it's, it, he has the same thing with pain and so what the hell? Yeah, I, I think I think Hannah is right here. We should not think that um, the better viola is a bigger viola. 
that is definitely wrong and therefore we can have a smaller viola that sounds much better than a bigger viola or the other way around. The only difference between the bigger and the smaller viola is that the bigger viola sounds darker. But darker does that mean better. And therefore, when you look at people like Yuri Basmet, for example, you know Yuri Basmet? Yeah? Sure you do. And um, he plays quite small instruments. And he is one of the best people, I think, although there is, um, what's her name? Um, she's professor in, in, no, 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 no. Um, a, so a lot of famous viola players and the mm -hmm. stage and whatever they play small instrument because what matters is not the darkness in the big ones at all it matters how it projects again it's not about having a full dark sound it's about having this vocal mm -hmm. well, let's say if the sides think that they a good sound the bigger the better, so the best ever sounding string instrument would be the top of the bass. Yeah. But it's not, it's really, 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 really fine. So forget about the size. Yeah. But, but on the other hand, the darkness is not unimportant of the viola because of the color of the sound. So we should not completely ignore that. Otherwise, we could play a violin with. Uh, viola strings that as it does not work, but we should not think in this kind of um, schema or this pattern that we think, oh, it has to be big or it has to be old Italian to sound good. We should really be open. It's quite possible that you find a really good sounding viola which is not good. I mean, there is definitely um, no scientific proof material component that makes any Stradivari sound better than other instruments because Stradivari do not sound better than other instruments. So you prove something that is not existing. Um, so when you look at these old Cremonese varnish, there's only very little of this varnish left anyway, because they are all worn up. They are all kind of having only fragments of this um, varnish. And there are almost every five years a new scientific institute finding out that the secret of Stradivari is something. I, I remember some years ago in Switzerland, they they treated wood with some mushrooms, with some fungus, and then they found out that this sounds now much better than a Stradivari, and they gave the instrument to a concertmaster and the orchestra and winter to approve that. I mean, how scientific is that? And I heard then a year ago that this instrument that was proven by this concertmaster in winter tour that is better sounding than a Stradivari, uh, that this instrument now, five years later, collapsed because the mushroom did now completely destroy and ate all the wood, so it totally fell apart. I mean, but you read that and you think, oh yes, now they found the secret. Fact is, they were great craftsmen, these people, and artists, and built, really built the, the best possible instruments. And um, the material they used, if it's some pigment in the varnish or some special wood, has the same um, Kind of importance than the canvas for a painter. So, if you give a, to Picasso a canvas or to another painter, one is doing the Picasso on it, on it, and the other is doing a totally unimportant drawing painting on the same canvas. And so, how you, what you do with the material, is more important than the material itself. 
So any other questions? Questions? <laughs>